give a brief introduction. How may many of you know out there anyway, is an experienced CEO, a serial entrepreneur with a, a, a demonstrated history uh, in the telecommunications industry. In 2018, he co-founded Satel IoT, which is the first satellite telecom operator for global continuous IoT connectivity um, over 5G protocol. The emergence of LEO satellite constellations enables Satel IoT to offer global coverage to IoT devices anywhere through direct to satellite connectivity using standard 5G devices. So with that, how may please continue? Thank you very much for, for the opportunity of being here. Uh, let's talk about uh, what's the problem that we detect uh, five years ago. Okay, uh, there is a statement that all of us uh, know that 80% of the world has no mobile coverage. And uh, what the solution to this uh, that it has been until today? Okay, as of today, the, uh, satellite IoT, the solutions that have is not commercially viable for most use cases. What we have seen is uh, most of them they are serviced by Geo, which has uh, not only uh, coverage limited by uh, region, but also by the terrain, since uh, all the solutions have to have, uh, need to have uh, a direct uh, line of sight uh, vision. Okay. Uh, at the same time, what we see is that all the solutions use expensive and proprietary uh, devices and protocols, which they have no economies of scale and they are super expensive. We are talking about devices that starts at 100 uh, euros per device and goes up to two, 300 euros each, okay? And this solution makes that uh, that uh, the market it, it has not grown as, as expected, okay? The solutions are too expensive you know, to address all these uh, massive use cases. Uh, what we see is that in 20% of the world, where there is mobile coverage, there are around 5 billion IoT devices already connected. And in the other 80% of the world, uh, there are only 5 million connections. The 80% of the world uh, has not been digitalized. And the solution that we have uh, uh, created and, uh, and deployed in the market is uh, a telecom uh, focused a standard based approach. We are working with Leo. Uh, we have already two satellites uh, flying and we are going to launch eight more next year, okay? That uh, provides coverage everywhere. Uh, what we have done is uh, we incorporate MBIoT, as uh, explained by uh, the previous speaker, okay, release 17, based on the 3GPP standard. Uh, the, that uh, way, okay, that devices can roam from terrestrial to satellite uh coverage uh which means that existing devices uh soup uh, five dollar device of the shelf uh, that will be uh, upgraded to release 17 uh, because there is no difference on the radio no difference on the on, on the antenna okay can be used and the service uh, can be provided up uh, to, a, to a terrestrial price uh, point uh, very close to that, okay? Then the, the solution is that only, what we have seen is that only 5G, NTN, MBIUT can offer coverage everywhere at the terrestrial price point. We we look at uh, different solutions at the moment, okay, based on standards or uh, standards de facto or standards the CGPP standards. And what we saw is that uh, there are these Sigfox, or there was Sigfox. Sigfox is uh, already uh, uh, history, okay? But there was a solution that it was LoRa, which is a very uh, good technology that is designed for massive IoT and it's affordable. But the point of LoRa is that it cannot be an extension of coverage of the MNOs. MNOs use 3GPP technologies, okay? And uh, it cannot roam from terrestrial to satellite with a single device. You have, uh, it needs uh, two different devices, okay? Uh, Packeting one, but uh, they are still two, two different devices. And of course, uh, you need a provider for the terrestrial coverage and another uh, provider for the uh, satellite one. The only technologies that have all these uh, characteristics uh, that are the ones that the customer demands, it's MBIOT. What, what we see is that uh, in the market, we just have discovered that since today, okay, the critical, what we call the critical IoT market was, uh, well, Seth, 
okay uh, critical we talk about ultra reliable very low latency very high availability all these okay are the are the type of uh, communications okay are the type of uh, 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 connectivity that is already covered by the uh, classical iot satellite providers we may talk about tidmasat global iridium morcom thuraya any of those okay then what we uh, what we see here in this in this graph okay the, this is the cost of the of the device and the cost of the, the rpu uh, the price per month okay when we talk about massive iot we talk about a small building a small metering logistics uh, capillarity network smart agriculture all these are uh, devices that have to be deployed in millions okay, and uh, uh, but cannot pay uh, the cost of uh, of the uh, critical uh, iot uh, market but in and this market it's absolutely massive what you have discovered that is that uh, uh, it's already there okay and there is a lot of uh, use cases that today they are not being connected And, and, what, and we really believe, okay, that the, the solution has to be Leo. Uh, why? Because Geo has two problems, okay? One is that the obvious, okay, that the Geo has limited coverage. They just have a specific regional coverage. And there is a lot of use cases that needs uh, mobility. But the second one is that the, the terrain difficulties, okay? A Geo satellite, uh, uh, have to there is a lot of applications that need uh, they are close to the ground okay which needs uh, line of sight connectivity which is absolutely impossible with a geo satellite in a lot of uh, uh, cases with a real satellite that flies over uh, the device in this case a uh, uh, cow okay uh, it uh, it has uh, uh, several moments of uh, line of sight visibility which uh, makes possible the connection with a uh, uh, mobile device uh, what we have done, therefore, it's we reshape the mobile standard. We have been working for the last four years inside the 3GPP in order to become the first 5G IoT uh, telecom operator from space. We provide a standards based, low cost coverage everywhere. Uh, as you see, okay, with a unique implementation of roaming uh, with the storm forward technologies. We, uh, we have uh, been the number one contributor from the space industry. Uh, to the release 17. Uh, we did uh, 17. Gatehouse is uh, working exclusively for us, okay? But in parallel, what we have done is uh, developing our own protocol stack that is implemented on a regenerative satellite, real regenerative satellite. Our approach enables seamless terrestrial extension cost efficiently. This, uh, that's exactly what we are. We are an extension of coverage of the mobile operators using exactly the same device, uh, connecting to the mobile operator through a roaming, a standard roaming agreement and a standard roaming connection uh, protocol. Uh, the customer keeps one point of contact. The, the, it's the, the MNO, the mobile network operator, is the point of contact of the final customer with the material price increase. And, uh, and we may provide the service with fewer satellites using our astron forward technology and for the mno it's uh, it's great because it's a uh, full coverage with uh, no capex uh, or capex fee uh, and a new revenue stream when uh, we talk about uh, this is not on the release 17 okay uh, we we will see it on the release 18 or 19 but we are still we have still implemented it because we believe that it's the way the correct way to address most of the use cases that are not in real time. Uh, what we do is uh, we do uh, we have a part of the core on the satellite, part of the core on the ground station, and we are strong forward uh, the roaming protocol. This means that we may uh, service the market much ahead of anyone else because with uh, just the four satellites, the first, first commercial satellites that will be launching um, in next year, we may start to deliver service to these non-time sensitive applications. This means that uh, our go-to-market needs much less capex and uh, we may become profitable without uh, uh, arriving to the near real time, which requires uh, very uh, uh, hard uh, implementations and capex. We are the only one that uh, are deploying MBIoT addressing customer demands. Here we see the legacy incumbents 
that of course they are not uh, uh, they cannot do roaming with the uh, uh, current uh, MNOs okay they are not using a standard devices then we see the direct to device which is uh, something that is going to happen as uh, as explained at a previous speaker, okay, on the next year. The new space disruptors are these uh, companies that were uh, on the market uh, before the standard was closed and are working with uh, proprietary devices, which makes absolutely impossible or very difficult to survive with, an, uh, with a 3GPP standard working directly to satellite. And we have the, the one, okay, that uh, are working with uh, uh, fully standard devices with a fully standard roaming implementation with them and all. What we believe is that uh, we have opened you know, with the CGPP the opportunity to address this 1.4 billion devices that currently are serviceable. According to Ericsson or GSMA, the, uh, the market will check today, the market is only 4 million connections. We believe that in the long term, uh, uh, can go up to 1.4 billion. Okay, Ericsson and GSMA uh, talks about around 2 billion devices uh, that in the market. Of course, with an RPU much, much lower than the one. Okay, today it's around 80 euros. Okay, and we believe that it goes down to uh, less than 0 0.5 euros a month per device. And this is the, the elephant in the room. Okay, direct to device. Uh, how do we solve? Uh, there is, uh, this is the final goal of most of the companies. There are more than 500 million workers that, uh, that are outside the coverage of the mobile operators, more than 700 uh, million hobbyists uh, online, but billions of people that live in very uh, low coverage area. Uh, there are three solutions that are on the table today, and it depends not only the technology, but also the sustainability of the, of the business and, uh, and the, the deployment of the technology. Uh, the first one is working with MBIoT directly to the mobile phone. Uh, this will allow text messaging. That's exactly what uh, uh, some uh, providers, they, they are deploying in the market. And the, it's an interest of uh, a lot of uh, uh, mobile device manufacturers. It will be 5G new radio. Or that will be 6G, okay? That is there and that will be working seamlessly between satellite and terrestrial. This is a question, okay, that we will solve in the next year. Thank you very much.